Okay. So um, in, in the last exercise, in exercise one one, we were looking at how we might create a spiral by uh, using transformations, right? We used uh, first move, then rotate. And we uh, kind of layered them. If you think about them moving from left to right in the, in the file, we first did move, then we did rotate. And we can keep going. Another way to approach the same um, idea would be to use a matrix of transformations, right? And we can use the same algorithms or a uh, collection of operations to result in an algorithm through a matrix as opposed to step A and then step B. All right, so again, uh, we're going to do something like this. Notice that this one's a little different. We also have a scale factor um, found in, in uh, all of the objects. They're scaling down as they uh, move towards the center. Right? And um, as opposed to thinking about each one of those steps of our algorithm discreetly, we can think about them uh, based on their kind of accumulation or their accumulated effect. And that's going to be, that can be represented through um, a mathematical object called a matrix. The plural uh, of matrix is matrices. Okay, so here we have uh, a simple matrix. So let's focus on this portion here on the left. This matrix is a 4x4 four four matrix, and it shows us the uh, combinations of the matrix in two dimensions. Let's call this direction A. This call this direction B. So as we move from through A to B, we're getting the combinations of A0, B0, A1, B2, etc. through the whole matrix, right? So it's four by four. So matrix matrices allow us to understand the relationship between two uh, collections of information, right? This, in this case, four by four. And they also are convenient ways to, uh, to aggregate multiple matrices. So we can use uh, math, math, math operations, expressions, etc., to evaluate the combination of this matrix and this matrix. So you can see it breaks down by, if we have this as our first element, we multiply that by 2, we multiply this by 3, multiply this by 1, and then this by 1. And as we move across this matrix from this matrix, we would result in, in the, this matrix here on the, on the right, which is the result of those two. To break that down a little bit further, right, here's a different matrix that is three by four elements in its definition. And um, if we were to accumulate or um, do matrix operations, right, from one to another, we can see that the resulting matrix representation takes all of the elements in the first row and relates them to all the elements in the corresponding row in the second matrix. Now this is getting a little abstract. Uh, at first let's think about this as a two-dimensional uh, representation, right? We have one direction here and another direction here, defined uh, by a certain number of elements in the matrix in either direction. Um, and it, it will hopefully become a little more clear as we start to use the matrix what it's actually doing. Right? Here's a um, screen grab of the transformation matrix in Grasshopper itself. Right? And this one is a dynamic representation of the matrix information that we give it. So it automatically calculates the result for us and shows us the corresponding um, result of all the matrix operations so that we can use it afterwards. And this particular object we're going to be doing using is a transformation matrix as opposed to uh, one that can be used for more mathematical operations. All right, and again, the idea here is that we're going to be accumulating multiple transformations, right? So let's go ahead and bounce back over to our Rhino and Grasshopper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this, but then save it as the next file, 1-2. So we're just going to be keeping, we're going to develop from here instead of starting over again. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to disconnect my G input from my step B. So that I have my step B and step A separate. And then I also need to disconnect the G input 
of my step A. Now you can do that by either holding control and sort of undrawing the wire that is connected, or you can right-click and say disconnect A or G in this case. All right? Uh, so as we were saying earlier, if we look at the result of the X output of any transformation object, we can see that we have here the actual transformation information, right? It says move it this much, right, in this direction. Um, similarly, if we look at the rotate coming out of X, it says rotate this about positive Z, right, or this many degrees about positive Z. All right, so instead of first having to do the move, then the rotate on the move, then more steps uh, kind of cascading off to the right, we're going to think about each one of these now as discrete operations, right, where here we have um, one step operation, one, uh, oh, sorry, one move operation, one rotate operation, and we can have as many of them as we want moving down the list. Um, and the way we're going to uh, bring them all together is through uh, our matrix, our transformation matrix. All right, so if we um, move over to the right here on our canvas, and let's go to the Transform tab. Under Utilities, you see here that we have the Transform matrix. Okay, now let's drop that onto the canvas. And you'll see that it has a 4x4 four four grid with a corresponding set of values to it. Right, um, and we can't edit this, but it shows us the uh, values as an indication of what's being stored within it. And what we have to do is we have to bring all of our operations together and bring them into this transformation matrix to get the corresponding result. Okay, so um, the way we're going to bring our transformations together is by compounding them. And again, that's also under Transform Utilities. Let's compound our operations, which would mean move and rotate, right, if we do those things together. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we actually want to uh, be a little bit more specific in terms of how our transformations are moving into our object. So we're going to merge the streams coming out of these two X outputs together. That's going to be from these sets tree merge object. Okay, so if I bring x and x into my d1 and d2 inputs, I'm going to zoom in and get rid of my extra input here, d3, I don't need that. Right? If I look at the result coming from my, uh, my merge, first I have all of my move operations, and then I have all of my rotate operations in one big long list because I gave uh, the inputs of the merge to lists. Right, this is my merge object. So if I try to compound all of these transformations, what's going to happen? I'm going to get one compound transformation that has 110 elements to it. Now that's not, doesn't seem exactly right because if I had previously in my last exercise, 55 rectangles moving around. So I need to have 55 compound transformations that relate both move and rotate. Okay, so the issue here has to do with our inputs and how they're ordered. Right now we have just a simple list coming out of X and X. Um, going into our merge and going then into our compound transformation. Okay, so if lists don't seem to be doing the trick, what would be the, the next uh, level of ordered uh, data structure that we could use in order to um, end up with only 55 compound transformations? If you have a suggestion, go ahead and drop it into the questions window, and um, let's see if you have any ideas on how we might be able to achieve that.